hier noch eine Nachricht in eigener Sache. Free Spirit TV ist eines von mehreren Projekten des Free Spirit Bewusstseinstrainings. Dieses Training ist ein hervorragendes Konzept für Menschen, die einfach mehr vom Leben wollen. Wenn du dich nach etwas sehnst, sei es, dass du noch glücklicher sein möchtest oder reicher, gesünder oder nach einer tollen Beziehung, wenn du dich beruflich auf deine Vision konzentrieren und noch so einiges anderes verwirklichen möchtest, dann empfehlen wir dir von ganzem Herzen das Free Spirit Bewusstseinstraining. Du findest es unter www.freespiritinfo.com. Ah ja, und noch etwas. Da immer mehr alternative Kanäle im Internet unterdrückt werden, wissen wir nicht, wie lange wir dort noch senden können. Für den Fall, dass die uns das Licht abdrehen, sei vorbereitet und abonniere daher unbedingt unseren Newsletter auf freespirit-tv.ch. Danke und schön, dass es dich gibt. And this is what we've got to do. We've got to highlight the sheer extent of abuse and the detriment it causes to society. What um, does someone who wants to blow the whistle need to know? Right. Uh, what they've got to know is that they're doing the right thing. And in doing so, they prevent someone being hurt. They prevent another, if we talk about child abuse, they prevent a child being hurt. That's what they need to know, number one in their mind. Everything else is just going to be what they call collateral damage. Yeah. You know, and I like to think that me and the others that came forward, we're not the first, but I think in recent times we've kickstarted this. And I, hopefully, if I win my case in the civil courts, I can then get the national media to push my story out there. That would be great. And so the police are shamed into ever mm. doing this again. Mm. They will be shamed into never doing it, and the government will be shamed into And I like to think that we've already achieved that because when we have our protests, when we go into Parliament, oh, and I don't go on my own. I go with victims mm -hmm. of abuse. I go with people that are convicted criminals. Mm -hmm. So it shows a collusion that we are coming together. We are not enemies. Our enemy is a paedophile. Yeah. And in my opinion, anyone who protects a paedophile, they're one themselves. And anyone who comes, who, anyone who attacks those that are doing good work to expose it, maybe they are as well. And we've mm. got to look on them really with questionable eyes. We've really got to look on them, these people under a microscope. Why are they causing problems? Mm -hmm. Why are they trying to disrupt the good work that we're all doing? Yeah. You know, I get that some people might not like the police. I get that. However, these ex-criminals, they haven't got a problem with me. And mm. these are people, one guy um, that, that, that does so much with me, he's done 19 years, he shot a policeman. 19 mm. years in prison because okay. he had a bad upbringing. I love him to bits and he loves mm. me to bits, you know, and we work very closely together. So he hasn't got a problem with it, so why should anyone else have a problem with it? Yeah, good question, you know? yeah. The problem here are the paedophiles and mm. the Satanists and who else is covering it up? And again, someone said to me, we get these blanket comments thrown at me. Uh, it's being covered up by the Jews and the Masons. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, paedophiles come from every single social strata. They mm -hmm. come from every single religion. Mm -hmm. You know, They're they all come the from place. every single yeah. colour. You know, someone said to me, oh, mm -hmm. um, you don't get many black paedophiles. Mm. Well, that's another nonsense. You get as many black paedophiles as you get Chinese paedophiles as you get ginger ale paedophiles as you get, mm. you know, they, they come and that is the ultimate secret society. Don't go pointing the finger at the Masons. Right. They're, the, trick. they're the mm. secret society, the paedophiles, and they will protect each other because they have a secret mm. and they don't want their secret out and they need to keep fueling their habit, which is the children. And I, I remember talking to... Um, one guy once and I said, what is it about sex with his children? Mm -hmm. He said, it, it gives you power, it gives you energy. And he said, I was in a room once and there was a few other men there and they went out looking for a child, right? Someone went out to get a child, don't know where they got them from, a kid's home or whatever. And he said, they were, the other men were pacing up and down in the room like drug addicts without any heroin. And all of a sudden the, the phone call came in that they had a young boy, and he said, everyone just relaxed. Oh my like, God. Oh. He said, it's, it's like a drug. It's a drug, yeah. it's a drug to yes. him, it's a drug to him. You know, and it, and it fuels it, it fuels so much, it really does. Why would they go to such lengths to cover this up? And they do, mm. they go to extraordinary lengths 
I mean, I can only say what the British government have done to me and how we've seen it in the independent inquiries, how the secret services, the special branch within the police, mm -hmm. the military intelligence have all worked together to silence, especially people speaking out when the evidence points towards prime ministers like we had Ted Heath. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to victims of Ted Heath that have actually been raped by Ted Heath and sexually assaulted by Ted Heath. And I spoke to quite a few. And they're, they're trying now to sort of rubbish the victims. Yep. And people that are speaking out are getting, again, done for liable and put in prison. And this mm. is what they're doing. Perverting the course of justice is another one they use. Um, now Why we, would they make up such a story? Well, I mean, well, people have to ask themselves. And, and we're looking at the same names crop up all the time. Now, when you're in the police, you work an area, it's the same families. If you get a bad area, there'll be three families that cause all the trouble. Mm -hmm. You take them away, the place gets a lot better. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's the same with politician. I could probably give five names of politicians whose names consistently cropped up in inquiries. Boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom. Consistently cropped up. And these are ones that are dead. So Leon Britton's name always cropped up. Ted Heath's name always cropped up, you know. Um, who's the other fellow? Uh, Jana, Lord Jana's name would crop up. You know, now their names kept cropping up. There's 634 politicians, mm -hmm. MPs in the UK. We don't hear the others, but we hear these same ones all the time. Yeah. And these are people that were given high up positions mm -hmm. of office. Now, if I went for a um, sensitive job within the police, I would need to be what they call vetted. So they would need to look into all my personal history, which mm -hmm. would mean my financial history, my social history, my educational history, my work history, and my sexual history, mm -hmm. right? So they, and I did go for one of these jobs, and they needed to know how many sexual partners I'd had. And they actually ask you that. And they actually ask you if you're involved in, in um, swinging and things like that. And I was told that if you are involved in, or on certain um, internet sites, dating sites, that are just casual sex ones, you're probably not going to get the job. And also what will go against you, and this was said to me by a lesbian police officer, a lesbian sergeant, if you're gay, there's a good chance you won't get these sensitive jobs either because it will show um, that your proclivity to have more sexual partners, which will expose you to bribery, right? Okay. Bearing that in mind, that's how it works. How could certain people like Ted Heath, who had been active paedophile, mm. you know, preying on young boys, especially young boys from the care system, be allowed to go from what they call a backbench mm. minister, a low-level minister, a low-level MP, to prime minister. Yeah. And right. again with Leon Britton, how could he be allowed to become Home Secretary, and, and he was a secretary out in Northern Ireland as well, highly sensitive job. Mm. We, we've just heard about Mountbatten, Lord Louis Mountbatten, who is the uncle to Prince Charles, mm -hmm. you know. We've heard about him. Now, there were rumours about him being a paedophile. And people say, no, it's nonsense, it's rubbish. And again, dispelling it. Well, now the FBI have turned around and said, I think the CIA, sorry, have turned around and said, we knew that Louis, Lord Louis Mountbatten was a paedophile uh -huh. of young boys. Mm -hmm. Well, we all knew that. I knew that. They're protection officers. Mm -hmm. these, these, these politicians and these members of the royal family get police protection officers. Protection, they don't get yeah. military protection mm -hmm. officers, they get police protection officers. They know. Mm -hmm. A protection officer for one of the MPs said to me, I knew what he was doing. And again, I thought, why aren't you coming forward? Two, two protection officers for Ted Heath did come forward. And they did, personally, these are two constables that worked on, on um, diplomatic protection that mm -hmm. covered the MPs as well. They actually were, were given the job of, of protecting uh, Ted Heath and they accosted him one to one about the young boys that were being brought to the residency part of number 10 Downing Street. Young boys were being delivered. And again, they've been delivered, so they had to go past security. So why is that security yeah. officer not saying anything? What's happening? Who's delivering that child? Yeah. A taxi driver or even one of their drivers? Who are these people? Mm. Why are they. There's a saying, happen? Aline, in order for the triumph of evil, it takes but for good people to do nothing. Yeah, that seems you know? like 
And yeah. this is it. And, and yes. I'm calling out, mm. and I'm calling out, I'm calling out, and I call out to the camera. Mm -hmm. Come forward. Do not be frightened. Do not be scared because your fear is nothing to the fear these children go through. And it is what is morally right. It's what's spiritually yes. right. Yes. It's, it's what your mother would expect yeah. you to do. It's what exactly. your children would expect you to do. Yeah. No matter what, mm. I can hold my head up and know I did everything in my power to put an end to this. Yeah. You know, and I was prepared to do that with with the, with the threat of imprisonment mm -hmm. and the threat of losing my children in front of me. You know, and and I stood by my word on that. I never backed down or changed my narrative, and that was that. It's very it was non-negotiable. Mm. It wasn't that. As a, as a parent, I know what my children mean to me. Yeah. You know, there is no greater love. Mm. I would have lost my home. Mm. I I almost accepted I was losing my home. Mm. But is there anything we, the people who are watching, can do to make it safer, safe or safer for whistleblower to step forward? Well, we'll have tips? back them. Mm -hmm. When they come forward, back them up. Um, if they put a post out, boost it. Mm -hmm. You know, again, when this goes out, you know, I say to people, pull it out there, share it, pull it on YouTube, pull it out, spread the words, you know. Do not let our politicians get away with this because one of the things I have learned is that this isn't a domestic issue. This is a global issue. Yeah. Children are being traded. And do you know, I said something once. I said, right, here's a thought. Why don't they on national TV, on international TV, play a child pornography film? And it was like horror. I said, I'll tell you what, if you was to see, and part of my job, years ago we had to watch the, the, the child porn it was part of our thing because we had to prosecute it mm. you know and when it how to survive something like this well unfortunately what happens is a lot of us become alcoholics yeah. you know and that's what mm. happens mm. you know um it because there, there, there is no help for you mm. you know and you're just surrounded by by bad news and and just horror stories all the time and it, mm. and it erodes you it totally erodes you and you know people have breakdowns and post-traumatic yeah. stress disorder and it, it does it totally destroys you and i'd say that i'm not advocating job and i'll be far from it i mm. you know I, I want to crush anyone who's got any involvement in it but if people were to see what a child has to go through mm. there wouldn't be one person bar the odd pervert which would probably enjoy it, but then again, they'd have access to it anyway. Those people have never experienced it. When they see it, they'd want to bring back hanging the next yeah. day. They'd want the death sentence brought in the next day, yes. and they would. Yeah. I'm telling you, they would. And there was, um, there's a guy who's uh, a reverend in America. He speaks out quite a lot. His name Bill Bean. He's a fantastic guy. Does a lot of good, and uh, he was turning out you know, a reverend and a Christian, and he said, um, if I was put in charge of prisons for that house child abusers, they'd be empty the next day. And someone said, well, why would they be empty? Mm -hmm. What would you let them go? He went, no, I'd kill them. <laughs> yeah. And he went, well, you're a reverend, saint." He said, no, if people hurt children, that's it. That's, yeah. you know. And we had Rodrigo de Tuerte, the um, prime minister for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And he, he stood up and he said, because uh, uh, the Pope, criticised him on his policy of killing um, drug dealers. He was just having mm -hmm. execution squads and the Pope classed him as being an animal. And he turned around and he, he called the Pope a son of a whore and said, how dare you point a finger at me? He said, you put your priests into my country. Mm -hmm. We're known throughout the world as being kind, friendly people. We, we fill all your hospitals with staff because we are benevolent people. Your priests came and they raped our mm. children. And one of the children they raped was me. Mm. So don't you ever point a finger at me. Okay. And he said, you hurt children in my country, you die. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, you know, no matter what your opinion of it is, that, that sentence alone, I thought, you courageous good man, yep. you know. And, <laughs> and this is what we know mm. now. I, again, I'm not going to advocate murdering people, and I'm far from mm. it, you know. Um, and the one thing we need is intelligence and, and, and paedophiles. We need to milk them for the for what they know. Um, but you're dealing with very, very deviant criminals. You know, the mindset of a paedophile, you know, is in very, very, in a lot of them. Mm. When they're profiled, a lot of them don't have previous convictions for sex abuse. They yeah. have convictions for, for 
quite complex dishonest crime like deception ah, okay. you know mm -hmm. so when people say there'll be a pattern of offending a lot of time mm -hmm. there isn't yeah i just want to ask you what kind of offenders are there you know it, well i mean it it, it it so varies i mean mm. i was lucky enough um, back in the early 2000s to, to work with a profiler and this guy was um, appointed by the the British government, he was based in Ireland, Southern Ireland, but he would profile high level sex crimes mm -hmm. and, and, and murders against children. And it was brilliant because he imparted quite a lot of knowledge. He used to run training courses as well on, on, on sex offenders mm -hmm. and how they work and, and the different categories of sex offenders. And one of the strange things he said was that flashers, where men go and just flash mm -hmm. themselves, he said, one of the most dangerous offender. Really? He went, well, they're just flashing. He went, uh -huh. because they're opportunistic. He said they will go from just exposing themselves to rape okay. like that because the opportunity will arise. Okay. So they will take that mm. opportunity and then they will attack. Mm -hmm. Whereas others will will think about it, will be in their mindset for years and years and probably never will come to fruition. Mm -hmm. You know, but mm -hmm. what is always in the way is opportunity, you know? Okay. Opportunity. So it's um it is really, really interesting because mm -hmm. He said, because we used to get a lot of people that had convictions or were investigated for um, looking at child pornography. Mm -hmm. Now, the pornography has to go away and to be looked at by an expert as well. We would grade it. It'd be graded one to five, five being the high level. And it would independently have to be graded. And then from there, we would pull it to the prosecutors and see if that person would be prosecuted. And a computer was seized off a school teacher. And this, this profiler said to me, is he allowed to continue working? I went, well, he should really be suspended from work. But he said, you know, um, so what are your grounds on suspending? Because nothing's been proved, yep. you know? He's actually innocent under British law. Mm -hmm. And until it comes back as, as criminal mm -hmm. and he's charged, really, what, what are your grounds? I went, well, you, you have a duty of care, really. He said, but again, if an allegation's made, it might be a false allegation. Yeah. You can't. And I went, well, and he said, well, I'm going to give you an example of what I've dealt with, very similar to what you've dealt with a school teacher, had child pornography. And this fellow would teach sports to kids and all the kids loved him. And they alleged, someone's alleged that he's got porn on his computer. And the question was, should he be um, banned from working? Should mm -hmm. he be suspended? And uh, the, the decision was no. Whereas I said, yes, he yeah. should. And he said, when they raided his house and they seized all paperwork, when they went through all his computers and his paperwork, he'd actually been planning on one of the children that he was teaching cricket, the game of cricket, mm -hmm. he was actually planning on abducting this child because he knew where the child walked and where he walked home, abducting him. And with three other men that he'd got involved with, they were going to rape and then dismember that child. And it was all planned, and it was actually only weeks away from happening. Oh my God! So he said. So this was a mindset. So that so the child pornography was the indicator yeah. that something's wrong, but actually in the mindset in this man's inside, it was incredibly sinister. You know. Yeah. And so yeah, you know that's what you look and mm. very very deviant. Mm. And again, when you're interviewing them. Um, a lot of them, they're very narcissistic mm -hmm. and they want to control the interview and, and very clever with what they do. But then again, others are just stupid, you know, they're yeah. just perverts and they're just stupid. But I mean, Corrine will, will give her a brilliant mm -hmm. testimony of, yeah, of, 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 too, of yeah. the mindset of mm -hmm. the paedophile. But again, we, we need to get into the mindset because we need to understand how they work and how to catch others. Right. And if we look at uh, paedophiles like Mark Dutroux in Belgium, mm which is something I talk about in the UK because it's the nearest thing we've ever got to um, a real massive paedophile ring involving the royal family, businesses and everything that actually got exposed. Because mm -hmm. the Belgian government did everything they could to cover that up. Yeah. It was only the fact that the firemen blew the windows out of the building and then a million people took to the streets. But Dutroux, what did he know? Who yeah. was he involved with? And when the profile come back, Detroit was actually wasn't really a, he was a pervert mm. and, and, and a rapist, but he wasn't a child murderer, you know. But he so knew something. He knew something, he knew <laughs> a lot more, yeah. So Many that, people got killed there, right? 90, oh, no. nine zero so civilian witnesses, 90. 90 civilian witnesses died in the lead up to the trial. 
and they would only prosecute children that made allegations that Dutroux had raped them, not against mm -hmm. other people that had raped them. So it was only him that went down, but we're, we're seeing that again in, in the UK at the moment. We're seeing Prince Andrew mm -hmm. has been alleged to have been having sex with underage girls, you know. You know, the brother of the the, the, the next one in line to the throne, mm. you know, with, with the Epstein happens. case. And then look what happened to Epstein. Again, mm. he dies. And, and we see the same pattern. Whenever anyone speaks out, they have an accident, they die. Yeah. yeah. So what is Helpful. going on? <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy. But what I also think it's really strange is this role of these child care centres. What's up with that? I mean, but, how but, can uh, they work? How can they cover up? And why do they do that? But, but, but look at what's got, gone on now. Years ago, you people could afford to have the woman at home looking after the children, and the man goes to work. We've got a breakdown in marriage. You know, so Western society in the UK, I mean, you know, marriage doesn't equate for a lot of the people having children. Mm. A lot of children were born outside of marriage. Single parenting is rife, especially in poor areas. It's actually trendy in certain areas. They've got this what they call baby mother, baby father culture, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then, of course, single parenting weakens a family. Now, I'm not attacking single parents because mm -hmm. I was one, but I'm saying to single parents, don't do it. Don't bring up a kid on your own if you can help it. Yeah. A child needs a mother and a father. Yeah. And again, I'm going to upset people, you know. Gay couples have got children. I'm going to upset I'm, I'm not saying yeah, well, that. But, but, it's, but it's anyway true, though. Right? Yeah, you know, you I mean, need... You need Two parents, mm. you know, and, and when you're one parent, you're weak, you're financially mm. weak, you're emotionally weak, and if you get sick, what happens to your children? If you've not got a support network mm. around you, your kids going to care, and then who else is coming into your lives? Paedophiles will prey on women with, with children. They will, mm. and, it, and it might be years before they do anything, but it'll be an incubation period. There'll mm. be a paedophile that might like a child at six years old. She meets a woman who's got a three-year-old, and it could be three years, and then boom, that age, and then they're in there. So we see that, and then the kids go into the care system, and what we've seen in the UK is absolute organised systemic abuse. And it went on, and, and you know, I need to speak about the religious institutions as well. Yes, you know, the, the stronghold that they had, and when we look at religious communities such as Southern Ireland. Mm -hmm you know, and parts of Scotland where, where religion is still very much the mainstay mm -hmm. of society. I mean, we've got what we call sectarianism, you know, the Catholic and the Protestant divide. We, in Scotland, it's massive. And, and you will have care homes that, that were run by either Protestants or they were run by Catholics. Mm -hmm. And Northern Ireland, Belfast has been two of them that have, have um, really come to notice. Um, one was Kinkora, one was Corbyn, I think, one was run by the Protestant church and one was run by the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And the children were being used as prostitutes, they were being raped. And then, and then you had the paramilitary groups were actually filming the children being raped and using it to, to torment the MPs with it. And there, there was um, two brothers I spoke to, twin brothers, they were put in this one care home, a Catholic run care home, mm -hmm. run by the De La Salle, um priests. There were this I don't know, Cistercian priests or whatever they were, Franciscans. Are these twin, twin brothers you interviewed? Twin brothers, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they were made mm -hmm. to rape each other mm -hmm. in front of priests, and priests were masturbating while they did it. And, and they told me that, you know, the, the um, paramilitaries, the IRA, were then making money at the children as well. And if the children said anything, they were, they were shooting them in the kneecaps. You know, and this went on it, it, with the, um, the other one, the... Uh, Oh, the one which the British government had involvement with. Um, I've just said it, it's just gone out of my mind. In Belfast, but mm -hmm. the same thing. And, and th they did it on purpose. But th then there are many people involved, right? Yeah, it's so, organised. So yeah. It's organised. and It's all about money? It's all about money. It's all about money, it's about power and money. And the investigation I was involved in, in gangsters were involved in it. Gangsters were involved mm -hmm. in it. And they were procuring the children because the children would go to them because they were pillars of the community, you know, and they would, they would move to them. And it was money. And the social Excuse workers me. knew about it too? The social and workers knew. They just looked away. They looked away. 
And not only that, when you looked at these care homes, they had hospitals in them, mm -hmm. right? They had kitchen staff, they had cleaners. Mm -hmm. Now, hospitals, how many nurses and doctors would have treated damaged anuses, ruptured vaginas, syphilis, gonorrhea, hepatitis, venereal diseases of that extremities? They would have dealt with them all the time. Mm. And where are they? Where are these nurses? Where are these doctors? Where yeah. are they? I, I went round to one on an inquiry while I was on, and I got the medical notes of this young girl, mm -hmm. and it was just appalling, mm -hmm. you know, what she had wrong with her. And I went and saw the doctor, and this girl was now a grown woman, so 30 years later, and the doctor wouldn't see me, and I actually went round her house and took the notes around there. And I said, how can you explain that? Yeah, what is it? And she, she just started crying. She said, I'm, I'm frightened to speak out because I could be struck off and... I said, if a child was presented to you now, what would you do? She said, I'll call the police straight away. I said, but why didn't you then? Yeah, why? I said, well, clearly, what was happening to that girl? She said, well, it's clearly signs of sexual abuse. And she passed it off as a, just an infection, you know. And also because of fear, losing fear, her job, everything. losing yeah, the her whole position. Lot, the whole, so, so speaking out is power. What mm. victims want is a voice. They mm. want to be what we call witnessed. They need to speak out and they need to see justice. But the British government have got this system where they pick what we call low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. They will send one, one paedophile, mm -hmm. a working class man or whatever to, to yeah. court, make a big deal of it. But when it involves politicians, when it involves people high up in society, you know, I, I know, and I, again, I can't speak, I know of one footballer who's always on the television, he's always in... I know what he's been doing. Mm. I know exactly what he's been doing. Um, it's not been proved, and it maybe not. But you know, when when you know about these things, and, and you sit there and think, "My God, it, enough's enough." Mm. But um, whoever speaks out, they're, they're discredited straight away. Yeah. We have seen in the professional footballing scene where there's been trainers that have been deliberately preying on children <laughs> that, that have come from bad backgrounds. They want to be footballers. Uh -huh. They put their energy into football. And the, these talent scouts come along and they know these children haven't got a father at home, no one's coming for them, so they've been raping them. You know, we see it with sports coaches and, and again, the music industry mm. is, is rife, you know. Yeah, that's and, and people mm. sell their soul for, mm. for celebrity status and they do. You know, there's been quite a few in Hollywood have come forward. Mm -hmm. You know, again, look at Michael Jackson, you know, yeah. and there's, there was that uh, Feldman lad come forward and said about Again, was too frightened to name names, but he said mm -hmm. those that run Hollywood. Harvey Weinstein, look what he was mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, you know, it's getting well, more and more. We, we, we should day. be drawing yeah. a parallel. The, the, the TV should be doing programs non-stop on this. Mm. Non-stop, they should be hammering this. It should be on the news, it should be everywhere, and yet yeah, it's nowhere. Do you feel in the future it will be different? If we allow our society to continue the way it is, no, it will only mm. get worse. Mm. You know, you look at, you know, the, the, the desensitisation of children, the pornography on telephones is sitting there, young lads just watching pornography. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the kids are making their own porno films. I mean, we're, what's happening to our society? It's just, and no one's bothered. You know, yeah. that's the other thing. That's no the one strange cares. thing. Yeah. No one really mm. gives a shit what's happening. They're not bothered. They're just interested in what they've got, the fact that, you know, their clothes and, the, and everything else. They're, mm -hmm. they're just not bothered. Yeah, that's just... That's, I just really can't explain that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult for me to understand. Yeah. But we just go on. And how do you keep going on? How do you do that? Because what I, inspires you? I, 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 I get direct feedback from work mm -hmm. I do. I get people saying, keep going, keep going. I get attacked, uh, but you just got to... Um, You've just got to accept that. Um, but the people I work with have been victims and, and they come forward and that we all work together mm. and we are moving forward as a community. We're getting the word out there and we are slowly, slowly doing it. Mm. So I know we're gaining ground. Yeah. Bit by bit we're gaining ground. We are, so it, and that's what does it. When, and the friends I've made you know, that have been victims of it and mm -hmm. their compassion and their love and, and to know that in doing this, we can stop it happening to another child. Yeah. You know, we'll never stop it. It'll always go on. 
it will always go on and that's an unfortunate fact but we can be a thorn in their side we could be a stone mm. in their shoe we can be a, a stick in their spoke you know we can stop a certain amount of it yeah. going on and we can expose it and this is what it's about exposure exposing what's going on mm -hmm. so and and not only that I, you get a call in you get something in you that doesn't mm. let you rest until you've done it and that's yeah. what i get it doesn't let me rest until i've done it but every now and then you need to take time out from it because it gets too much mm -hmm. and it does take its toll on you it does true. tires you that's understandable. What was your most uplifting experience so far in this kind of mission? Do, do you know what? There was one woman come forward and she went to a, a worker, a key worker, and she said, if it hadn't been for John Wedger, I'd have killed myself. Mm. And it just made, I didn't realise the impact, the, the you impact had. I had, yeah. you know. And then when you see the comments saying, you, you know, I've come forward because of you, mm -hmm. you know, because of you, I've, come, I've gone to the police, I've done this. And there's been a lot of that and people speaking out and people now putting their own testimonies out mm -hmm. and saying, John Wedge has inspired me yeah. for coming out. And, yeah. and that has been it. But when you, when you hear that you have a direct effect on someone's life and people come up to me in the street mm -hmm. and come up to me and they give me a hug and uh -huh. say, don't, just don't give up. Cool. Please don't yeah. give up, and that's what it is. And it isn't money. I've not. I've lost. I've lost so much money from this. Yeah. I've lost near enough every penny I've had to this. Um, so you don't go into this for money. No. You know. You don't. <laughs> I don't think so. That's but nice. friendships. Yeah. I made some fantastic mm -hmm. friendships, and I really have. Um, I met some really, really good people. Some brilliant people, and the bravery as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that it's really awe-inspiring what some of them have been through. And they, they still get up in the morning, you know, and they still continue and they look after themselves and you think, my God, I wouldn't have the strength to do that. Mm -hmm. So as it's given me a, a real lift in humanity, what what human endeavour can do, you know. And uh, see, with me, I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in, not in a religious aspect, I believe in mm -hmm. Jesus. He don't like the children being hurt, you know, and, right. and he'll help anyone who helps the children. Mm -hmm. And and I'm willing to do his work, and I am. Mm. But we're up against an enemy, and we're up against a very nasty, very spiteful, very vicious enemy. And do you know the strange thing? When, when I first started doing this, I knew, especially when I started delving into the satanic abuse thing, mm -hmm. that I'll be up against what I thought the devil, you know? Yep. And I thought the devil would be like a great white shark or a grizzly bear or something. Mm -hmm. It isn't. Evil is like a little mosquito. Mm -hmm. It's like a snake. It's like a wasp. It, mm -hmm. It's horrible, annoying, petty, spiteful, nasty, like a stomach illness, like bacteria. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing honourable about it. Yeah. And they come out of the woodwork. They've come out of the national media. Mm -hmm. We've been attacked by one magazine called Private Eye. Um, and there's one woman there called Rosie Waterhouse, who's a, in, as soon as anyone speaks out against Satanism, she's there to attack them. A despicable individual. Um, you get trolled, you just, you know, but it's all spiteful, nasty, horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, and they will go to extreme lengths to try and silence you because they don't want this exposed. They don't. Yeah. They'll do anything. Huh? They'll do anything to silence it, anything to shut you up. And the British establishment will as well. Mm hmm and they will um, but yeah so it's um knowing i'm doing the right thing and i know in my heart i'm doing the right thing right. as well you feel you know? it yeah i don't yeah. need to be told you know that's true yeah. what kind of people are supporting you in your campaigns it, it's, it's uh, incredible um there's no borders with this there's no boundaries there's no social strata it, it is totally across the board and the biggest breakthrough really is having ex serious organized criminals totally behind me, no, that's you know, really convicted strange. murderers, yeah. mm. you know, violent, dangerous men, you know, totally behind me. Mm -hmm. And I'm behind them because they equally go out there and do the same. And there's one guy, um, he, he went down as one of the most notorious criminals in, in British criminal history, you know, mm -hmm. and me and him work very closely. His name's Chris. Um, and he was part of the, the Cray Twins. Have you ever heard of the Cray Twins gang? That, mm -hmm. They were the notorious gangsters mm -hmm. of the 60s, and, you know, 
in the UK and, and he went away for murder with them. Um, and murder he didn't commit, but however he, he didn't. Okay. He did a, a you know a huge he did a life sentence and um, me and him worked very closely together and, and so that has been it. There's been no no borders at mm -hmm. all, and also no religious borders either. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one guy, he's very very high up in the health service in the UK, and he's a psychiatrist and a Muslim guy. You know, and again when I talk about you know my stance for Jesus, but he's doing the same from his stance. Mm -hmm. So again religion doesn't even come mm -hmm. into it and it is a fight against evil and, it, and yep. it's a fight of doing what is right and protecting children and and there is this um political underbelly at the moment and they're blaming child prostitution solely on muslim grooming gangs and i speak up against that mm -hmm. because yeah there are muslim grooming yeah, gangs of course. but they're jewish they're grooming gangs there's, there's catholic grooming gangs there's you know Mm. Uh, but there, it's a polit political agenda, mm -hmm. and and when I, I, I spoke to to a guy, you know, it's involved with the, the the Muslim faith, and a good stand up guy, you know, him man, and he said, you, you won't find any anyone who's true to their religion that wants their children hurt. You know, no. so it's a nonsense, and, yeah. and I'm with that. So, no, that's been a big sidetrack as well, and they tried to politically align me with this group. Oh, yeah. And I won't, I won't be politically aligned. Mm -hmm. um, but politicians have been also uh, both against me in the cover-up, but also there's been good politicians, okay. what we call cabinet ministers, one in particular, mm -hmm. um, a very prominent British politician, and, and, he's, and he's bravely stood by me. Yeah, that's he's, actually, he's actually has, has publicly declared that he feared for my safety if I continued. Mm -hmm. And he actually lost one of his jobs because he stood by me. So. Mm -hmm. There are politicians that don't want this. They are mm. disgusted at this, you know. Um, so we need them. That's good to hear. But what can they do, uh, you know? And, yeah. and I was told by one politician, it's way above their pay grade. It's above them. Mm. It's above politics, John. Yeah. And this is what we're looking at. And I've had someone come to me from military intelligence, you know, and she said, there, there is this strata above. Mm -hmm. You know, there is this world above it, you know, and... I can't even comment on that," she said. "You know, mm. so just but be careful. She said, don't get involved in politics. <laughs> you know, because that's that will be a downfall as well. Yeah. Because you you'll have a, a lever then, and if you upset the political or the financial stability, you're in a mm. world of trouble. You know, but yeah, no, it's been a huge, huge eye opener. So uh, it uh, goes from paupers to kings. You know, mm -hmm. people are both disgusted, but then again, when we look at our enemy, the paedophile, they come from a similar mm -hmm. mass demographic as well of society. We oh, can't well, point a yeah. finger and say just because they're from that area or that religion that they're a paedophile, no way. Mm -hmm. It's just as varied. And how can we support you? Well, we get the word out. That's what we do. Because what we've got is our voice, you know? Mm -hmm. And th that's one of the biggest things we've got. And we've got the truth. Mm -hmm. And we speak out. And we don't back down. And we, you, you know, use your intelligence with everything you do. You know, don't get in trouble. You know, and if the authorities want to chat with you, then then, then talk to them. You know, but um, because you've got to work with the system. You know, because if you work against it, it will, it will crush you. You know, yeah. um, but speak out. You're speaking the truth, and keep getting the story out. And mm -hmm. they'll be, you know, put an appeal out to people to come forward. You know. Um, yeah. In Europe, there, there will be police officers that know of cover-ups, mm -hmm. you know. We, we saw it in Belgium with Mark Dutroux. The Netherlands was a huge hub of it all, you know, yeah. a massive hub, you know. There'll be coppers in the Netherlands, there are police officers there that will know what's going on. There'll be police officers in Austria, Switzerland, France, Liechtenstein, Poland, wherever, you know, come forward and yes. speak out and just say no more. Because if you don't speak out, children get hurt and they yeah. will continue to get hurt. And really, why have loyalty to a paedophile? Why? In, in, why would anyone do that? You know, I, will, I don't want to serve a paedophile and I don't. Yeah. You know? We don't want I'm that. I'm going to struggle paying my taxes knowing it goes to some of them. But I mean, what, yeah. what can you do? But mm. um, yeah, no, they won't have any hold on me. And, uh, and I will expose them where I can and I will do. Yes. And I would say to others, do the same. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be frightened. The fear lies solely with the children. And also the fear lies yeah. with those that are doing this because they're frightened 
and they mm. are frightened. And it's quite funny because they um, they said that they there was Satanism was getting exposed in the UK during the 1980s, mm -hmm. and there was a couple of um, politicians were really pushing for it to be exposed, mm -hmm. and there was documentaries done on it. And then the media tried to calm it and shut it down, saying it was satanic panic. <laughs> that it was a myth, it didn't exist. And yet, despite the fact there was overwhelming evidence that it was going mm -hmm. on. And, and funny enough, Wilfred said, yeah, there's satanic panic, because they're panicking. Yeah, The right. Satanists are panicking, because mm -hmm. they're getting they exposed now. Yeah. They're getting exposed. And you know, shame on those that hide behind the name of God and Jesus. Shame on them priests, mm. the nuns, you know. Yeah the rabbis, the imams that have abused people in the name of God and hidden behind there, mm. you know, and shame on really the, the, the police officers that have failed to come forward and speak out. Mm. Fear they, to protect us. They have a duty. Mm. In England, they have a duty to act without fear or without favour, mm. right? Their loyalty is with society's vulnerable. And in shutting your mouth, you, you're, you're going against, against your oath. Your you're going against yeah. what you are, you know. Mm. Why would you stand up and, and keep your mouth shut for these people? Why? In God's name, why? Mm. And I say to them, you know, stop being cowards and come forward. Right. And I will call them cowards if they've deliberately... They are cowards. They are cowards. Right. You know, I mean, if they've deliberately done yeah. this. And guys in the military mm. that, that have known it's gone on and did nothing. Mm. Times have changed now. Yep. Do it the right way and speak out and get your testimonies out, you know. Mm. And do it the right way. Again... Be careful with naming names. Be careful right. with naming names. They don't names. have to name names, right? You don't. You but don't. you can still whistleblow and You can tell name what names happened. in a court. Mm -hmm. Name names in the right place. I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it in a court. Mm. And I have named names and I've named them. The politicians know the names because I've spoke out in a privileged environment. I've been allowed to, right? My solicitor knows the names. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I no doubt the intelligence services know the names yes, of what they've got. Um, and I have spoken to, to a few people and they mm. know, they know they've got my testimony. So if anything happens to me, it goes out there. Right. So I, I have already, you know, prepared myself in mm -hmm. case something does go wrong. Yeah. But that, you know, one individual in particular, his name will go out and it will mm. go everywhere. So either way, it's, get, it's going out. But I'm not going to hinder um, the potential expose of, of the British police Mm -hmm. just for the sake of, of, of one name, which a lot of people wouldn't know anyway, to be honest. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, no one would know, even I've said a couple of names, I don't know, they, 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 they go with that, I don't know. They, mm -hmm. You know, because um, we're all, all about the same people like Prince Andrew and that, well, everyone knows them, but, you know, there are a lot of powerful people, heads of, um, yeah. you know, big multinational companies and things like that, that no one's probably heard of, but mm. very, very powerful people. And, and I want to... Um, bring people's attention to what's called the RAINS list. Mm -hmm. And it's an acronym, R-A-I-N-S, list. And if you put in RAINS list, satanic list, it will come up, it's, it's on the yep. internet. Now this was a list that was put out, um, I think about 15 years ago, maybe mm -hmm. a bit a bit longer than that. And it's by a woman uh, called uh, Joan Coleman, who was a leading trauma therapist mm -hmm. and started looking into satanic, victims of satanic abuse. And, and how prevalent it was. And she took testimonies of, from a lead in London psychiatric hospital, testimonies from numerous, numerous mm -hmm. people. And she would only put a name on mm -hmm. this list because there's a list of places and names and it is a brilliantly um, constructed list, yep. professionally constructed. It's not just scribbler names. It's, mm -hmm. And she would only put them on if there was three independent people corroborating mm -hmm. each other, then the names went on. Very good, yeah. And there's the mm. name of uh, a police officer that was connected to the unit I was on. He's mm. on there. Mm -hmm. There's a police officer that's connected to another police force which covered up abuse, mm -hmm. you know, ahead of there. Uh, there are politicians, you know, Ted Heath's named on it. And there are um, vicars, there are all sorts of businessmen and actors and everything else and locations on there. And I actually spent a bit of time researching this um, doing open source research on the internet. It's, it's amazing how many names check out. There's been okay. people that have subsequently been convicted of, of abusing yep. children, you know, and the places have been connected. So it's a very, very credible list. They've yes. done their best to discredit it, mm. but um, they're struggling because it's... Yeah, it's interesting, Lisa. I've, watched, I've seen it. Yeah. 
So I would say, it's amazing. check yeah. that list out, mm. you know, because it really needs a little bit of research and, yeah. it, and it needs putting out there. <laughs> a lot of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are there any future projects we need to know about? Um, I'm going to write a book. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've been encouraged to write a book and get everything down. Um, not a great deal at the moment. I mean, I continue to sort of do, do our protests outside Parliament. Um, I'm going to Scotland at the weekend for um, a victim and survivor group process mm -hmm. and, and getting a lot of the a lot of these big children's homes they they've set up survivor groups so there's so many of them and it's getting these survivor groups together and what we want is them all to get together and have a day of protest okay and, and mm -hmm. bring attention mm -hmm. and, you know and um, I'm just in negotiation with the, the veterans the military veterans mm -hmm. to see if they will support us. The, uh, the bikers um, to come together so mm -hmm. we can all have like, a day of highlighting it, not a protest, because mm. I don't want to cause no one in trouble, but highlighting it and sort of really take take our argument into the central London mm -hmm. and do what they did, the white flowers thing, just bring it to a standstill, make people realise yeah. how yeah. massive this is. This is the single biggest threat to children mm. that there ever has been, you know, and, and has always been the same. Yeah. And we just need to expose it. So I really don't know. It's in God's hands. I don't know where it's going to take me. We'll see. Um, mm -hmm. There's um, a news channel that have taken me on as a, um, uh, you know, as an advisor. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a, a bit more with them. Okay. Cool. And um, you know, with me though, I, I I work on this how I worked in the police. I will get people from every single discipline together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bring them all together and it's amazing how we all sing in concert you know mm -hmm. that's smart, uh, professionals yeah. mm. and the victims all together and bring it all all in as one whereas a lot of them have always concentrated on just the victims doing this and the victims but i'm not yeah. from this everyone get together so hopefully you know maybe next year we can really get organized but it's mm. difficult because victims and survivors and i'm going to upset a lot of people now they fight amongst themselves well they do, it's sad, they do, they fight, and they, they you mm. know, and there's a lot of mental health problems. Um, and again, highlighting mental health and suicide. Yeah. Suicide is a, a horrendous side effect of this. Yeah. Too many deaths have been lost because of abuse, you know. And it is so, um, and that's that, and, and you know, and to say to people in despair, you know, just come forward and speak out, you'll mm. feel better, you will Back feel better. Up. Yeah. The shame is not with you. Mm. They did it to you. They're the bad ones. Have no shame. You did nothing wrong. Right. You know? That's important. Is there anything else regarding this topic? I haven't asked you, but you would like to inform us about? Um, well, what, what I like to say is that let's look at the prison system. Mm -hmm. right? Let's look at 80% of UK prisoners. Now, I would have thought it's pretty similar for for mainland Europe, 80% mm -hmm. have come from abused childhood backgrounds. Let's look at the percentage of people that are using heroin, street mm -hmm. drugs, you know. When you walk past a shop and there's someone there begging for their drugs, you know, find out their background, where they're from. Mm -hmm. And it will have a, a, a different attitude, it will be an attitude changer for you, you know. and. Um, Look at the, all these social uh, indictments, really, like the, 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 our prison population, like our mental health, our alcoholism. Look at the, the detriment it's gone. This, it, this is huge, and we, we need to look at everything in its entirety, how widespread this has become. Mm. And that's what I want to say is that don't think it doesn't affect you, because it does. And a lot of people, they just don't talk about it. Because yeah. it's difficult. It's difficult for a man it's, to talk about it as well. Because it, it, it's demasculating, mm. you know, if a man has been raped, he doesn't want to come forward. Yeah. And there's certain communities, male communities, that, you know, it's outlawed to be gay. So they're not mm -hmm. going to speak about being a victim of, of, of anal rape. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. then they're, they're not going to ever do it. But, you know, and that will eat away like a cancer, you know. Mm. And, the, you know, I can only talk about the UK and the lack of funding and the lack of spending that goes towards uh, mental health mm. it's horrific you know they're, they're just cutting back on it every step they can and i just think people need to get a grip they need to get yes. a grip 
course. We need to start speaking out. Mm. It's an uncomfortable topic. It really is an uncomfortable topic. Yes, that's but, true. Um, it's one that needs looking into, and it really does. And he's looking into and he's researching, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But thank you so much for giving me this platform. It's important. Yes. Thank you. No, it's quite for right. all this information. It's yeah. really, I'm really impressed. You're really and, courageous and, man. And and well, again, you know, I, I did what was right, you know, yes. and that's right. And I know. It, and. It fueled me to do more, and I, mm. and I just sit there and think, what else haven't I done? Like there, there's more I can do, but it depletes you, you know, because mm. it can be a lonely journey as well, because yeah. people don't understand. And I try to keep it away from my family, mm. and my friends sometimes don't want to talk about it because I talk about the same it's thing all the time, yeah. and I don't want my kids being brought down mm. by it. But unfortunately, they they watch the internet as well, and they, you know, and it's upset it? them when they realise what I been through I mean uh, mm. I did my best to shield them from it but it, it is platforms like this you know and, and check out the, the, the work I've done mm -hmm. and those with me that I've done and you can branch off the you know the people that I've interviewed mm -hmm. and and again I hope to continue doing work the work I've been doing with Corinne yes, uh, Husband, and people great. like that you know yeah. and those professionals coming mm -hmm. together but unfortunately it, it is it's a dark and dirty world and we do fall victim to sometimes to to the charlatans that, that think, well, we think they're doing good and actually using us and not doing good. And uh, yeah. I've fallen foul to that as well, been used by people in the past to put across their agenda and, uh, you know, but my, my narrative's the same and I will, mm -hmm. keep, I will keep saying it and I will keep going in the direction I want to go to. So who knows, mm -hmm. you just don't know. You know, yeah, I could no. never <laughs> have predicted my yeah. life would have ended up like this. I couldn't. Yeah, <coughs> I believe that. Yeah, but John, we are almost in the end of our interview, and in the end, we have always um, some incomplete sentences, okay, which yeah, I would like you to <laughs> complete spontaneously. Do right. you yeah, play along? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whistleblowers need. Whistleblowers okay. need support. Whistleblowers uh, need protection. That, now that's a good one. They do protection mm -hmm. for whistleblowers. That's one, especially police whistleblowers. Yeah. Because. Police don't get the protection. They don't mm. get the civil or the legal protection mm -hmm. because there's too many uh, things that, that they can hinder them speaking out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, protection, I think, is a, the big word there, and especially police whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. Children are? <laughs> I was mm. going to say the future. But, um, <laughs> well. <laughs> children are the essence of life. We hurt our children. We hurt society. Mm. You know, we root and 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 children, they're our children. Yeah. Right? So don't just sit there if you've got children think, these are my kids mm. and that's that and shut your door. They're your kids. Those kids out there, they're our children. And it's our duty to help them. Right. You know? Um, all these people that are going through IBF and I get that, but how many children are in care that need a loving home? Mm. You know, and when I say to people, why don't you adopt a child? There's so many children need adopting. Oh, no, I don't want to adopt a kid. Mm. I think, my mm. God, you know, they're our children. Yes. So. Mm. Police should. The police should. Police should serve the public. <laughs> police should do the right thing. Police okay. should be brave. And police shouldn't, shouldn't ever, ever, um, back away from doing what is right and speaking out against a cover-up is what's right. Mm. So police should do the right thing <laughs> and they should be accountable mm. for their actions. Helping means? Helping means. Helping me or helping means? <laughs> helping. Helping. Yeah, to help me. To help. <laughs> what I would say is, where would any of us be if no one helped us? Helping means everything. Mm. I was helped when I was growing up, my father died, and uh, another guy helped me, and, and he, he was good to me, and he showed me the way. Without his help, I would never be where mm. I am now. And I can always remember, with my four children, the older two are not my biological children, mm. and were going to go into care, because their mother had problems. And I can remember saying to him, what do I do about these children? And he said to me, I helped you, you weren't my kid. Why aren't you helping them? Mm -hmm. so, so helping is everything. 
Now, where would we be if good people didn't help us? Right. And it's our job to help others. And mm -hmm. it is, we should not be walking away from helping. Courage is. Courage. Well, courage isn't what I thought it was. <laughs> you know, um, I think courage is doing what is right. And I do. Mm. Courage isn't a big, strong guy, you know, mm. fist fighting and all that. That's not courage, that's stupidity, <laughs> you know. Courage is doing what's right. And I've, I've met some of the most courageous people and they've been the most unassuming people. Mm -hmm. And I must admit, I've met some incredibly cour people, courageous people in the police. And to look at it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think there was anything, you know. Mm. And it's not so obvious, then. Yeah, mm. courage isn't what you think it is, mm. you know. Mm. Life is. Well, life's a gift, you know. And whether we like it or not, we're stuck with it. You know, and life can be tough and life can be hard going and it can be an arduous uphill struggle. And for some people, life can be a terrible, terrible burden. Mm. But don't give up on it. You're stuck with it and don't give up. I, my best friend gave up and committed suicide, mm. uh, but that was under tragic circumstances. And, you know, I sort of get it, but it leaves behind such a yeah. terrible, terrible mess. And the last thing your family need to do is pick up a corpse as well as all the other pieces. And don't give up on life. Don't give up on it. You know, and I get it's easy for me to say, and mm. it is. I'm not in pain, you know. I'm not mentally hurting. Uh, I'm not physically mm. hurting. And, you know, it must be awful. And yes. it must be awful. But it, it is a gift, and it is. And you don't give up on it. Just don't give up on it, you know. I am. I am. I am. I'm an idiot. I'm a fool. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm worn out. I'm tired. <laughs> I've got no money. Oh I, am, I am poor. <laughs> I am. Um, I am just one person. Um, I need help. <laughs> the children need help. That's true. You know. Yeah. Um, I was given a job to do. I didn't want this job. I was given it, and I had no choice. I never set out. I was looking after children at home. I didn't want to work with children when I went to work, mm. especially other people's children, other people who couldn't do a good job with their children. Yeah. And I say that, and I do. You know, you hurt your children, shame on you. Mm. Shame on you. And uh, I am a person who didn't run away. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. And it was a hard, hard job. And it was. Single parenting is a hard, <laughs> hard job. Having to take this fight on anyone who knows it is a hard, okay. hard job. And I'm a person who didn't run away. I didn't back down. And I didn't think I'd have that fight in me, but I, I found it from somewhere. I don't know where I found it from. I'm not a tough guy. I'm not a fighting man or anything like that, but I just had it in me not to run away. Mm. I am not running away. <sighs> you know. I wish I could. I wish I could run away. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could change I things. I wish, I wish so much. I mean, mm -hmm. I, w I wish I could wake people up. Mm. I do. That's the main thing. I'm not going to wish for utopia because we're on earth and mm. it, it can be hell on earth. This isn't heaven. We're going to find heaven soon enough, you know. I wish people would wake up. I wish I could wake people up. I wish people would understand what is going on and maybe mm. then they'd do something. I wish people would see the catastrophe that, that is in front of our faces. And I do, I wish so much for that, mm. you know. Yeah, me too. I would never. I would never. I would never, oh, it's a, oh, it's a, it's a, that's a real tricky one, isn't mm. it? <laughs> you know, because we, yeah. we say I would never. Um, I, would, I would never encourage my children to do what I've done. <laughs> I know that. I, I would never, I would never regret um, the, the, the last few years, but I will never regret it. Mm -hmm. um, I would never want to do it again, <laughs> but I would never regret it, you know. Yeah. For the future, I wish. For the future, I wish. For the future, I wish, I wish I'm given a platform and I'm going to be selfish here. Um, I wish I'm given a platform mm -hmm. uh, for the future, I wish that the right people are also given the platform. Mm. For the future, I wish that the the governments, and I, again, I'm not just confined it now to the British government, I'm expanding now. I wish that the, the global governments make those accountable. Mm. 
yeah. for the damage they've done. And I wish they do that. And I wish they start releasing files that have been locked away, which ex which expose members of our royal family. Mm -hmm. And I know now Prince Andrew is one of them. Um, and politicians and people high up, I wish that that gets leaked. This intelligence is allowed out in the public domain where it should be. And, and I wish that um, we realise how much conflict in the world has come down to the result of, of the abuse of kids. Because mm -hmm. I would have thought there's been a hell of a lot of it and the yeah. cover-ups of it. Um, that's what I wish, yeah. Love is? Love is, oh, and it's, it's all we've got, isn't it, really? I mean, it's, I mean, it, for me, it's, it's just the love of being alive and being with my kids. It's just, it, it's, love is strength. Mm. That's what it is. Love, love is powerful, and and when when you experience, I don't mean love between a couple because I've never been married, and you know I've been a bit unlucky on that front. But I mean, but when you've you, you've got true love and and true love for humanity and what goes on, it is the most powerful thing mm. we've got, and it is it is so powerful. And again, go back to the I wish I wish people understood what love was, mm. the power of love, and it will change things. And it will knock hatred into the long grass any day. Yeah, so love is an amazingly powerful force. That's true. And now, if you had the opportunity to spread out a message to every person on this planet, what message would that be? Right, my, my message here, and I'm going to firstly speak out, and I'm going to speak out to parents. Do not abandon your children. Do not hurt your children. Realise the children are the most precious thing you've got and realise, treat them well, do not hurt, do not abuse them and they will do you proud and they will go on to make this world a better place. So I speak to them. Um, my message to those that have come from the position I've come from, and I'm talking out to police here, to, to police officers serving past and present, if you know of information pertaining to the cover-up of child abuse, you speak out. If you know of politicians that have been involved, people high up that have been involved in the abuse and the wretched crimes against children, you speak out. You do not be afraid. You, you, if you are afraid, you just bite your fear. You, you suck it up and you do what is right. And um, that is it. And I say to others, get behind us and back us. And I say to victims of abuse, you know, stick together there's strength in numbers don't infight please do not infight and let's all all of us amalgamate get together and we will change these things there's too many of us for them to hinder us you know we can change the law and we can get this exposed and we can make society so much better but um, stick together and don't do not infight and expose the wrongdoers wow Thank you so much, John, no, for your you. strong words mm -hmm. and your very important information you shared with us. I hope this interview will be watched all over so yeah. people really get informed. Well, I think that um, children are the most precious gifts we have and I think it's our responsibility to protect them. And I think you're doing a really great job. Thank you so no, much. No, thank you so much. God bless. <laughs> God bless. Your yeah. viewers at home, thanks for watching. Until next time, much love from Switzerland.